Kaido finna get his ass kicked. <laughs> if you haven't seen One Piece's newest episode, you got to. Because when I say it has some fire graphics, literally, the graphics were fire. I gotta give a special shout out to Toei Animation and Maguna Shitani for really doing their thing in this whole Land of Wano arc. We've seen a major upgrade in animation style and speed in this arc for sure, and I hope it will continue forever into the future. I'm very excited to see where they'll be taking things. This isn't so much of a reaction video of episode 1045 as it is just me being zen and pondering some things that I'd like to pick your brains about. Hello again guys, just want to thank you again for watching Zen Form. I am your host Zen. Join me as we have some healthy One Piece debate because there are just some topics that excite me about the show and I felt they should be shared with the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as watch to the end because trust me you are going to love this video. Also there may be some spoils in this video as you've been warned. But, if you haven't watched until 1045, then what are you even doing here? Get off your lazy behind and go get up and watch that shit. But before we get into that, Ade, cue the intro. I believe the most impactful scene, despite its briefness, is Momonosuke's brief cameo to show his full grown body. We don't get the full view, but we see the dreamy flowy hair and the deep cut washboard six pack abs. All of these attributes are reminiscent of Odin, and we know that Momo is finna be a beast. It's important to note that the manga is like a whole 46 or like 56 chapters ahead, so all my manga guys, please don't spoil it. We know that you know what happens, or is it you know that we know? Whatever, that's not the point. Just don't spoil it. Shinobu finally agreed to use her Juku Juku no Mi, or ripe ripe fruit, to mature Momonosuke's body. The only side effect is that his mind won't age, which I guess is a fair trade off because it had to be nerfed with some type of limitations. This is what gives anime depth because when you put obstacles in front of a protagonist, it gives the show more depth and more things to ponder. Pretty noble of Momo to want to grow up so fast, even though if not for his mom's Toki Toki fruit ability, he would be around this age anyway. I wonder how all of these people from the land of Wano acquired these abilities. We know how Momo got his, but it's very interesting to note that natives of the land of Wano don't exactly know what devil fruits are, and they regard any of their abilities and uses as something closer to magical or miraculous, something that can't be explained. Whereas the world government treats it as science and studies and militarizes these fruits for conquest and power. But anyways, I hope they really take the fight to Kaido, and that Momo's dragon Abilities are on par with his, giving us some sick dragon on dragon action. Uh, no, no weird stuff, guys. You know what I mean. I love anime because in order to showcase breathtaking scenes, sometimes it's okay to stray from the manga a bit to get a point across for fan retention or overall just to move the story along. However, this would be a little fake and plot armory because he really doesn't have much battle experience and should technically still have the mind of an eight-year-old. Take a brief moment to recall that part when Kaido captured Momo and was mortified to find that the great oldest son was a sniveling brat and worthy of giving him the righteous combat and battle he deserved. So I hope Momo pays him back for the disrespect. But anyways, on to the next topic. The fight against Killer and Hawkins is boring, yawn. But um, if you remember Killer, he's the um, vice captain of Captain K Pirates. So yeah, pretty cool concept, I think. I think he deserves a little bit more um, screen time that he gets, but we'll see what happens in the future. The fight between Big Mom, Captain Kid, and Trafalgar Law is also pretty boring, so we can skip that guy. Law is actually one of my most favorite of the worst generation and one of my favorite character concepts overall. Like, no seriously, who doesn't love the sword-wielding, surgeon pirate captain with an OP devil food ability? Because I know I do. But sadly, I can't say the same for Captain Kid Eustace. While I see where they were trying to go with his character concept, I feel like his attacks are pretty basic and just power type, which is okay, I guess, because Luffy is one too, but just watching a guy sling metal around honestly just isn't that visually satisfying. Luffy has forms and different strategies that actually make his fights interesting. Random thought, I wonder when we'll be able to see his Snake Man form again, because that was pretty cool. That leaves us with Sanji vs. Queen and King 2v1, and let me tell you, the editor does not disappoint. We get to see that super saturated 3DS graphics that the Land of Wano arc is basically famous for at this point. It reminded me a lot of some cutscenes from the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 game. This episode looped me back perfectly to my video I did a few weeks back 
on Sanji being on par with Luffy and Zoro and the three being interchangeable in many fights. I won't get too into it because I know you guys will be wanting to argue, but I'll post this somewhere in the video as well as the description. But anyways, as we watch Sanji use Gepo or Moonwa in the air, evading attacks from King and Queen both, we gain a newfound respect for the guy that was literally being held prisoner by Block Maria a couple episodes back. It reminds us that Sanji is dangerously strong. He just won't hit a girl and that is his fatal flaw. My other video is about this too, so you should watch it if you get the chance. Sanji and Queen also had some interesting back and forth, where Queen alludes to having some past with Journey 66. Hopefully the anime will expand on that as they usually always do. It's important to note that Sanji held his own against the two without even using his battle suit in this fight. Yeah, so big kudos to Sanji. Speaking of Geppo, one of the six powers or Rokushiki, I wonder if this is specifically called that by Sanji or if it's a little different because Sanji never had any former military government training. But he's just such a formidable warrior that he's able to do a similar technique. This reminds me a lot of Luffy's gear too, which he needed to keep up with Rob Luchi's shape or so, which greatly increases a user's speed. Mako of the White Bear Pirates was physically exhausted for this battle, so Sanji was all on his own with no high ranking pirates or samurai to assist him. Sanji definitely held his own though. As we wait for the special Zo Island concoction to kick in and for Zoro to heal up so he can kick some ass, I can't help but reminisce about the Dragon Ball Z days when Vegeta, Piccolo, Krillin, and Gohan and the rest of the Z fighters stalled Frieza until Goku had healed from his wounds. Something tells me Zoro is going to ride just in the nick of time if we're being consistent according to traditional anime standards. Before we round up, I want to circle back to the Haki versus the Six Powers argument. Referencing the battle between Who's Who and Jinbei, Who's Who is one of Kaido's Toby Roko by the way, we saw some things that may make some viewers wonder. I for sure still wonder if the Six Powers when wielded by the correct user can be stronger and a better alternative to Haki. We saw Who's Who's Tekai or Iron Body hold up pretty well against Jinbei, or at least for a time. We even see his Gagan or Fang Pistol injure Jinbei and give him a small flesh wound even when he was using Coat of Arms Haki to protect himself. I wonder if these abilities are amplified and stacked by powerful Devil Fruit abilities. They seem to be. I just don't want to make any assumptions. I also wonder if this ability can be further stacked on top of Haki, because that would be dangerous. Maybe we'll get a glimpse of that in the future. I'm really happy that Etro Oda and the editors brought these powers back because I thought they were thrown by the wayside when Haki was introduced. I'm excited to see Luffy finally beat Kaido. He's been getting his ass kicked and shouting affirmation for the past few episodes in typical Luffy fashion. But I do think we're approaching the final battle and trust me, I am on the edge of my seat. Thank you for tuning into the video everyone and a special thanks to those who watched till the end. We just made 500 subscribers so I really want to thank everyone for that. I'm been doing my best and just working hard. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and a subscription. Also, don't forget to share with your friends as well as check out my video breakdown I did on who I think is the weakest straw hat member from the crew in One Piece and all my other anime content as well. But other than that, thank you for watching Zen Fine Find your Zen, your final friend. I'll see you next time, guys.